I welcome all of you to the class. Uh, today we are going to uh, discuss about the moment of inertia very quickly. And we'll try to find out the moment of inertia of uh, few objects around us, okay, few geometrical figures very quickly. And the basic introduction of finding the moment of inertia will be given to you. Uh, so that uh, whatever the case may be, you can easily find the moment of inertia. Okay, let me recapitulate what we had done till now, and I will consolidate this class from from there onwards. Let Let's suppose that we have we have a rod, and say for example the length of the rod is L. The given dimension of the rod is the length of the rod is say for example L is a rod. Okay, as far as a rod is concerned, the rod is an uh, an object which whose one dimension is negligible as compared to the another dimension. Like if you look at the rod, we say this is a rod because this rod will have some area of cross section. Okay. But if its area of cross section is negligible as compared to its length. Okay. If area of cross section is negligible as compared to the length, then we call that object as a rod. Okay. So we say area of cross section is very, very small is negligible in comparison to the length that an object is called in, that object we call as the uh, rod. Okay. So let's suppose we have a rod and say, for example, the length of the rod is L. Okay. Let's say the center of mass of the rod. We know for a rod, the center of mass is that is geometrical center. That is at point C. Okay. Now, if this rod happens to rotate, okay, say, for example, it is rotating about this axis. It's rotating about this axis, which is a Z axis here. Okay, so if this rod happens to rotate about Z axis and we are asked to calculate the moment of inertia about this Z. Okay, so what we have to do, the basic formula for calculating the moment of inertia about any axis is given as integral of R square dm. Okay, so first of all, we have to find the mass element. The total length of the rod is L and the total mass of this rod is M. Okay, mass is uniformly distributed. Uh, in order to make it more uh, simple, let me assume that uh, I will treat this to be our x-axis. Let's treat this to be our x-axis. Okay, we'll treat this to be our y-axis. Okay, therefore this is our z-axis about which we have to find the moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia that we have to find will be along the z-axis. Okay, so this is a rod uh, along the coordinate axes are drawn. This is x-axis. This is y-axis. And this is z x the moment of inertia about the z z axis is to be calculated now in order to calculate the moment of inertia about this from the z axis we will start first of all we'll take a small mass element let's take a small mass element whose length is very very small let's say its length is dx okay and as far as the mass of this element is let's suppose its mass is d the length of this element is very small such that this element is at a distance of it's at a distance of r it's at a distance of r from the from the origin okay from the axis from where we have to calculate the moment of inertia therefore we can write as far as the moment of inertia about z axis is concerned the moment of inertia about z axis will be equal to integral of the distance of the element from the z axis that is r its square multiplied by the mass of the element that is dm okay now as far as dm is concerned we know when the length of this rod is L, the mass is M. When the length will be one unit, mass will be M by L. Okay. And when the length is dx, when the length is d of x, small length, therefore at that time mass will be equal M by L dx. Okay. And this M by L dx is the mass of dx. We call this as d of M. Okay. Therefore, our moment of inertia about z becomes I z becomes equal to integral of r square dm and as far as our dm is concerned dm is m by l dx that is m by l m by l d of x okay now look at the variable r since this variable r we are taking along x axis we can say it's variable r or variable x this is our choice okay let's call this as variable x no problem at all so in place of this r we can also write we can also write x okay so it's at a distance x 
so moment of inertia will become the variable of integration is now x it goes from 0 to l okay so it will be m by l and it is uh, m by l integral of x d x well the limit of integration is from 0 to l therefore as far as the moment of inertia about z axis is concerned the moment of inertia about z axis will be equal i z z or i z moment of inertia about z axis is equal to uh, m by l x square by 2 sorry it is uh, x square here okay it's x square okay because r is equal to x it is r square dm that's x square dm it will be uh, the integration will therefore be uh, x cube by 3 the integration will be m x cube by 3 the limit of integration is from 0 to n that's equal 1 by 3 l and l square that is m l square so please remember as far as the moment of inertia of the rod is concerned whenever there is a rod we have a rod of some length okay therefore the moment of inertia of this rod about this axis okay about this axis is equal to the moment of inertia of the rod about this axis is m l square divided by 3 this is the moment of inertia i and if we treat this to be our z axis then we say this is the moment of inertia about z axis ml square by 3 is the moment of inertia of the rod about z axis this is one case second is for the rod now i can still say we had a rod of length l for a rod of uniform mass the center of gravity lies at the geometrical center okay if we have to find the moment of inertia of the rod if we have to find the moment of inertia of this rod of length l about its geometrical center about its center of gravity i mean to say the rod is of length l okay we have to find the moment and the mass of the rod is m we have to find its moment of inertia about the an axis which is passing through the center the center of gravity okay that is uh, like this if we have a rod and the axis is passing through the center of gravity okay what is the moment of inertia about this centroidal axis okay we have two ways of doing it the first and foremost way is the general method as we have discussed since this is uh, since this rod is of uh, this is the geometrical center the centroid of center of gravity the center of gravity since lies at the uh, geometrical center therefore the distance from here to here will be the distance from here to here will be l by 2 and from here to here it will also be l by 2 okay so this distance is l by 2 this distance is also l by 2 okay so the total length we can say if this is the origin if we treat this to be the origin then this this coordinate will be minus l by 2 and this coordinate will be l by 2 plus l by 2 positive l by 2 okay now in order to find the moment of inertia about this axis what we will do we will simply take up the element okay let's divide it into small elements as we have been doing let's say the length of this element is d of x small a, small d of x and it, it is at a distance x from the origin okay therefore we can write the moment of inertia since this axis is the uh, cent axis which passes through the center center of gravity i will write this as icc or icg is equal to integral of uh, the definition is x square dm x is the dis distance of this element whose length is dx and whose mass is dm okay therefore from the unitary method we just discussed we can write this as x square and this dm we can still write this as this is m by l when mass is when length is l mass is m when length is one unit the mass will be m by l when length is dx therefore the mass dm will be m by l of d of x okay now look at the variable of integration the element d of x it has to traverse the entire length of this rod okay that means it has to go from minus l by 2 to plus l by 2 
that's our limit of integration will be here from minus l by 2 to plus l by 2. Therefore, this becomes the moment of inertia about the center of gravity axis becomes m by l. It becomes m by l integral of x square d of x limit of integration is from minus l by 2 to plus l by 2. Okay, that is equal to m by l. This is x cube by 3. This is x cube by 3. The limit of integration is from minus l by 2 to plus l by 2, which can further be written as this is m by l, m by 3l. This 3 will take out. This is l cube, that is uh, l cube. This is x cube, that is l by 2 whole cube, whole cube, that is l cube by 8. Then we have the minus. This is minus l by 2 cube, minus minus will be plus, that will be l cube by 8. Okay, so this becomes equal. The moment of inertia about the centroidal axis becomes equal to this is m. This is two times l cube. So two ones, two fours are eight. Four threes are twelve. That is m by twelve l square. Okay. Therefore, moment of inertia about the centroidal axis becomes equal to how much ml square by twelve. This is the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis it is ml square by 12 let me do one thing let me recapitulate what has happened till now so we had a simple rod whose moment of inertia we calculated about its two points we calculated the moment of inertia about we calculated the moment of inertia about this about an axis which is passing through this point okay and we also calculated the moment of inertia about the uh, centroidal axis about an axis center of gravity axis okay and we could see that the moment of inertia about this axis is m l square by 3 and the moment of inertia about this axis is m l square by 12 okay both these axes are parallel to each other and the distance between these two axes is l by 2 the distance between both the axes is l by 2 okay you should always remember if i do one thing this is the moment of inertia about an axis which passes through the center of gravity let me write this as icg okay let me do one thing this is another axis let me write this as iz such that iz is parallel to icg if i do some uh, a practice if i write iz is equal to moment of inertia about the center of gravity that is ml square by 12 plus m times the square of distance between these two axes that is l by 2 square That is ml square by ml square by 4. That's equal. Or let me do it like this. Let me write it like this. Moment of inertia ICG. is equal to ml square by 3 let me add this to it ml square by 3 plus m times the square of distance between two that is ml square by 4 okay so this comes out equal this will come out equal 5 by 12 ml square which is not which it is not equal okay which is not uh, ml square by 12 we have only ml square by 12 i'm what i'm trying to do right now i'm actually trying to create a formula between the moment of inertia between the two axes one is the axis which passes through the center of gravity and another is an axis which is parallel which is parallel to it okay 
So is there a rule for it? Okay, if we know the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis, uh, about an axis which passes through the center of gravity, can we find the moment of inertia about the rest of the axis which are parallel to this axis? Okay, that is, that is the question. Okay, yes, the, there is a method and we know that method is called, the, the theorem is called the theorem of parallel axis. Okay, what the theorem of parallel axis is, let me go back to your book. The theorem of parallel axis is here. The moment of inertia about this is the parallel axis theorem. Okay, the, the, it has been derived in the same way as we derived it for the mass moment of inertia. What does it say? It says that the moment of inertia about any axis, the moment of inertia about any axis is equal to the moment of inertia about the centroidal x axis. Okay, so moment of inertia about the center of gravity axis. Okay plus m times the square of distance between the two axes m times the square of distance between the two axes plus so what i am trying to do i am applying this formula in the sense like this the parallax moment of inertia for the rod the moment of inertia of the rod is ml square by 12 about an axis which passes through its center of gravity plus mass of the rod is m and square of the distance between the two axes was L by 2. This will be L square by 4. That comes out equal. This will be equal 12. This is ML square plus 3 times ML square. That is equal 4 times ML square. That will be ML square. 4 times ML square by 12. That is ML square by 3. That will be. This is what we had already calculated that is we had a rod of length l we know the moment of inertia about the axis which passes through the center of gravity okay therefore we can calculate the moment of inertia about any other axis which is parallel to this axis which passes through the center of gravity okay so using this parallel axis theorem the theorem of parallel axis this is very important so in fact this is a proof for the parallel axis theorem as well now there is something one more important term that has that we often use the moment of inertia for a rod is equal to m uh, ml square by ml square by uh, 3 about an axis which passes through its end and moment of inertia for the rod is ml square by 12 for an axis which passes through its center of gravity okay so what we do we write the moment of inertia i as m times k square we generalize it m k square sometimes we have l by l square by 3 sometimes we have l square by 12 similarly for the slender we have moment of inertia is equal to mr square by 2 okay for a solid slender so on and so forth so we general generalize it we write moment of inertia i is equal to m k square as far as this k is concerned this k is called radius of gyration this k is called radius of gyration radius of gyration okay radius of gyration so for example if we are asked what is the radius of gyration for the moment of inertia of a rod about an axis which passes through its center of gravity we write i is equal to ml square by 2 12 for a rod about an axis passing through its center of gravity that is given as in, in in by the formula of the radius of gyration it's given as mk square m and m cancels k becomes equal to l by under root of 12 okay that is equal to l by 2 under root 3 this is the radius of gyration this becomes the radius of gyration for a for a for, 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 for a rod for a moment of inertia which is which passes uh, about an axis through it is central now as far as the moment of inertia through the radius of gyration is concerned radius of gyration is an axis of a rigid body about which it will have the same moment of inertia as the moment of inertia about the given axis. What does that mean? Again, the example of the rod is best for us. For example, if, I, if we have a rod and we calculate the moment of inertia of the rod about an axis, say for example, about an axis which passes through about one of its end. We know the moment of inertia of the rod about an axis passing through about one of its end is how much? It is m. L square by 3 okay now 
let me on this on this rod we imagine one more axis we imagine one more axis on this rod such that the moment of inertia such that the moment of inertia about that axis is same as the moment of inertia about this axis okay that is let me suppose this is the axis fine such that the moment of inertia about this axis is same as the moment of inertia about this axis and i say i is equal this is at a distance k okay then i write moment of inertia about this axis is equal to m k square that is equal to the moment of inertia about this rod that is m l square by 3 m and n cancels k becomes equal to l by under root of 3 what does that mean it means if you go if the total length of this rod is l okay if you go to a distance of if you go to a distance of l by if you go to a distance of l by under root 3 okay go to a distance of l by under root 3 calculate the moment of inertia about an axis the moment of inertia about this axis which is at a distance l by under root 3 from one of its end its moment of inertia about this axis will be same as the moment of inertia about this axis okay this is called the radius of radius of gyration why there is a need of radius of gyration because it generalizes things for us otherwise for a rod about different axis at different points there will be different moment of inertia we generally write it as we write mk square this is our moment of inertia formula general formula for the moment of inertia for any object okay similarly for a cylinder okay or for a sphere as i will give you a homework to calculate the moment of inertia of a sphere you know the moment of inertia if you have a spherical body if you have say for example a sphere okay the moment of inertia of a sphere about an axis passing through its center uh the moment of inertia of a sphere about an axis passing through its center if the axis passes through its center sorry the moment of inertia of a sphere about an axis passing through its center okay if the axis is passing through its center then the moment of inertia is equal to, if the if the axis happens to pass through the center then the moment of inertia of the sphere of mass m moment of inertia of mass m sphere solid sphere of radius r about an axis passing through its center is given as 2 by 5 mr square this i am giving as a homework to students to calculate it the moment of inertia of a sphere about an axis passing through its center is equal to 2 by 5 mr square okay so we can generally write it as the moment of inertia of a sphere about an axis passing through its center is given as mk square okay if we compare it here it's equal 2 by 5 m r square m and n cancels k becomes equal under root of 2 by 5 r okay this becomes a radius of gyration okay now let's return back to the problem that we were trying to solve yesterday uh the last portion of this uh, we were uh, general plane motion okay let's go back to the problems and try to solve few more problems from this portion the problems are out here we had taken a problem yesterday let me solve this problem again today the question is okay problem 713 a uniform 60 kg cylinder bar is initially at rest on a smooth horizontal plane when the forces are applied determine the acceleration of the bar's mass center and the angular acceleration of the bar at this instant okay so as far as this rod is concerned its center of gravity will be at the geometrical center okay we have to calculate the linear acceleration as well as the angular acceleration for linear acceleration we know summation of all the forces is equal to product of mass and acceleration of the center of mass if we treat this to be our x axis and we treat this to be our y axis okay therefore all the forces acting along y axis will be you have 20 newton force acting downwards negative y therefore this is minus 20 newton we are having force of 80 newton acting along positive y that's a 80 is equal to mass of the rod that is 60 multiplied by the acceleration a that is the acceleration of center of mass therefore acceleration of center of mass will be equal to 1 meter per second square therefore the linear acceleration of the center of mass is 1 meter per second square now calculate the moment of inertia oh sorry in order to calculate the moment of inertia we know the formula that we have 
summation of all the moments, the resultant of all the moments about any point P is equal to the moment of inertia about an axis passing through that very point multiplied by the angular acceleration that is alpha. Let's take this to be the point. Okay, let's take this to be the point, point P and assume the, an axis passing like this. Okay, the moment of inertia of the rod about this axis is given as, is given as, uh, let me rub it here. The moment of inertia, let me calculate the moments first. The moment of 20 Newton force is clockwise. It will be minus 20 multiplied by the force arm that is 0 0.75. Then we have a force of 80 Newton. It is sense of rotation is anti-clockwise. We take it as positive multiplied by 1.75 plus 0.75 that is 2.50 meter. Okay, is equal to, this has to be equal to moment of inertia of the rod about this axis that is ml square by three, m is 60. Length of the rod is three meter divided by ml square, length is three by ml square by three, multiplied by the angular acceleration alpha. This alpha we have to calculate. Therefore, if you calculate this, 20 multiplied by 0.75 plus 80 multiplied by 2.5. So we have 20 multiplied by 0.75, that's equal to 15 minus 15 plus 80 multiplied by 2.5, 80 multiplied by 2.5, that's equal to 200, okay? Becomes equal to uh, nine multiplied by 60 divided by three, that's equal to 180 multiplied by alpha. Therefore, alpha comes out equal, that is 200 minus 15, that's 185, divided by 180, that is 1.027. Alpha will be 1.027 radian per second square, okay? This is alpha. We can also do it like this. So what we will do, we will not take the moments about an axis passing through point P. Let's take the moments about an axis passing through point C, the center of gravity like this, okay? Therefore, when we went on to sum up all the moments about an axis passing through point C, the summation of all the moments about an axis passing through point C will be first of all the moment because of this 20 Newton force. It is anti-clockwise. It will be 20 multiplied by the total distance of the this. The C will be at the geometrical center. Okay, it will be at the geometrical center. The total distance is three. Okay, okay, its total distance is three meter. That is the distance from here to here is 1.5 meter. Okay, therefore the distance from here from here will be 1.5 minus 0.75. So 1.5 minus 0.75 is equal to 0 0.75. Okay, so we'll write this as 0 0.75. This is also its sense of rotation is also anti-clockwise. Therefore it will be 80 multiplied by this total distance from here to here is 1.5. Okay, 1.5 minus 0.5 is one. So it is 80 multiplied by one is equal to moment of inertia of the rod about an axis passing through the center of gravity is ML square by 12. Okay, so I will write directly write this as M is 60. L is three, that is three square by 12 multiplied by alpha. Therefore that is 0.75 multiplied by 20, that is 15, plus 80 is equal to 60 into 9 divided by 12 into alpha. Therefore, alpha becomes 95 multiplied by 12 divided by 60 and divided by 9. That is 2.11. Alpha comes out equal 2.11 radian per second square. Now you look. In one case of, in one case when we are calculating the moment of inertia, when we are calculating the moments about an axis passing through point C, we are getting the value of angular acceleration as 2.11 radian per second square. But if we are calculating the moments about an axis passing through point P, then we are getting the value of the alpha as um, 1.027 radian per second square. This should not be the case, actually. The value of the 
moment of inertia the value of the angle angular acceleration should be single okay why we are getting two values first of all are the two analysis valid so if we are calculating all the moments about an axis passing through point p why there is a difference that is the question whether we should take alpha is equal to 2.11 or we should take alpha is equal to 1.02 so, though both the equations are fine we have not uh, violated any law but the question is why the two values of alpha okay i leave as an exercise to the students to think why the two values of the alpha which one is valid which one is not valid I hope that students will come out with some answer whether we should take this value of alpha or this value of alpha. I need the students to focus on this equation for some time and you will get the answer where the things are not right. Okay. So this I'm leaving as an exercise to you. So next, once we clear up this, we have to go to problem 1716. Sphere is rolling down in inclined plane. It's angular acceleration. And we have to find that hopefully we'll be doing in the next class. So this is all for today. Thank you very much.